Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to more ranked gameplay. Today, once again, it's one of those voiceover after the fact. The gameplay that you're seeing is live, but the commentary is not. The commentary is after the fact. I was playing on here, Plungeon Valley, and we are looking at uh, Lieutenant or Second Lieutenant Scyther. I kind of suspect that he has been taking lessons from Blitz War, because I kind of recognized what he was doing. Initially, um, I'm just planning on setting up what I'm going to do. I want to have a couple of AMX 10 RCs in the middle, both for eliminating potentially open targets, as well as hunting down units and just providing general information. Left flank going to be very lightly defended, just an AMX 2013 with an ATGM. Uh, so that's an ATGM LAN F3, as well as a Commander's Para. Far right, the push in Foxtrot is going to be my main push. So, Martyr 2s, providing fire support for infantry in the form of Panzer Grenadiers. MX-10 RCs, um, considering going with more infantry, and I eventually end up doing that in the form of more Legionnaires. I thought Legionnaires over Rima, because the short range is already covered in most extent by Panzer Grenadiers. And this way I also have some slightly standoff capability if it comes to a big fight there. Going with a Tiger, as well as two Leopard 2A1s, and finally a Crotal, moving the CV over there, and ready. Now, move out, get out there. Move into Bravo, oh, and this ATGM over here, uh, right in the middle of Delta, to provide some cover over there. Interesting about this game um, is that I was considering starting with a command vehicle for my two-pointer, to put some very quick pressure on the enemy, but I decide eventually not to. Because it is 100 points, at least 100 points, and you might need those 100 points to do something else. To, for example, hunt down the enemy. There's a flag Panzer Geppert. I've been hit with heli rushes a few too many times, so I really did not want to have that happen. Tiger lights up a UH-60P. Interesting spot. And I want to eliminate that before it drops off its payload. I really don't need any kind of uh, SF guys down there on the ground. And thankfully the Tiger has no problems with that. The Tiger immediately gets countered by a KF-5 Echo Jeong... Or is that a Jeng, Jeng Gong Ho? Anyway, they're fighter. Um, I quickly try to land the Tiger. Not fast enough. But the Tiger and the Kotal together take down the plane. And the plane promptly crashes onto the VAP 2013s. At this point, I'm a little um, surprised and concerned that I have not seen his main push yet. So it's probably in Bravo or Alpha, because it was not in Foxtrot. There's something over there in Alpha. Quickly mark it with a the flare. There, Jigsa Hwagiban, recoilless rifle infantry. Easy target for the AMX-10 RCs. And over here, there is definitely something happening. Yep, there's his main push. HGM's already on it, and trying to get spots on everything else. Since it seems like there's nothing here, I decide to drop off the Commander Para and have the other guys keep going. AMX-10 RCs are currently fighting against the main push that is in Alpha. But I'm still not at this point sure whether that's the main push or that one. Because he has a load of vehicles. Now what you're looking at over there is all sorts of recoilless rifle vehicles. Now, there's nothing heavier than an M45, uh, or sorry, M48A5K, so one of their cheapest tanks. It should not be a match for my Leopards, uh, although I do take way too long to try and get my Leopards to get back to a more favorable firing position. In the meanwhile, the VAP-2013s are moving. I decide to move the Martyrs. Well, there? No, we're going to move up. Because I think he has put everything in that push on the left. I'm fully expecting to lose the position in Bravo. In fact, I think I already lost my Commander Para over there. Uh, the Tiger is in a dangerous spot, and I flew in a couple of Cassiopes as a quick weapon against all of that motorized force. I wanted to make sure that I could at least deal with some of them. But of course, it's not simply unarmed or unescorted uh, motorized vehicles. If it was, it would be perfect. But there is some other stuff out there. Turning the missile on the uh, Tiger II off to not have it spend it on all sorts of cheap nonsense. Uh, that additional Cassiope buy was a bad one. I shouldn't have done that there, and that's why. Because that's K263, and it very quickly wipes out all helos. Over here, I have made it into his spawn, so he has very much nothing guarding it. Or at least, 
It seems that way. Time to get the tanks to move around, but that took me, a, well, a minute or so too long. There's his command, and he loses his spawn. But as opposed to myself, he did send a CV to Alpha. So now he has two options. One, he can bring a CV back. Two, he can try and take over my spawn and bring his command vehicle to my spawn. Uh, neither of which is probably very appealing because it's a long way down. And I have VABs covering both the units that he spawned in as well as the retreating point to where his command vehicle could go. So I leave the Legionnaires to deal with any reinforcements and the VAP 2013s and the Martyrs to cut off his command vehicle. I'm also trying to, to play as zoomed out as possible. This was a priority for me. I wanted to play as zoomed out as possible to try and keep an eye on those motorized units. AMX 13s being brought forward. The Tiger doing his level best with the rocket pods to try and deal with any, well, <laughs> anything it could shoot at. Because there was no shortage of targets. Pulling the Tiger back. And this is when I decide, or when I am questioning what's the best move here. Because against all that motorized nonsense, two Leopards might do it. But I decide to go with a different plan and I buy a CV. Because at this point he has so much coming for this position that my chances of holding it are slim to none. So instead of trying to hold it, I am in essence giving it up. Because I'm expecting that I might be able to get his command vehicle or to deny his command vehicle back in his spawn. And that means I can get my tanks to deal with his forces get potentially another command vehicle in and make sure that I get my reinforcements because then he's defenseless. That's a KAFV-90 and the Martyrs take it out or at least are working on taking it out. Just to be sure, dropping off the Panzer Grenadiers. And there's my command unit flying around. 1390s and AMX-10 RCs, just cheap stuff with fairly good rate of fire, trying to delay this push as much as possible. And there he found my command vehicle, and that was another mistake. I should have moved that back. I should have moved that back, but I was too busy with other stuff. That's a big mistake. Um, because if I pulled the CV back, that would have bought the 10 RCs and 1390s more time. Especially considering that his recallless rifle units are blind. The OH-6 is coming in to try and assist. But it really is a bit late, because I've already taken out a load of his units. Command unit still flying around. Legionnaires, I'm going to split these guys up. One to the edge, one to the side, and one to sort of guard the side over there. I'm trying to spread them out to create a safe landing zone. Two Leopard 2 ones are still alive. Unfortunately, the rest of my scouting party is not. And the 1390s and everything else die very quickly. Here comes the CV. Spreading out as much as possible, trying to cover all the possible entries, because I thought, you know what? If he manages to sneak his CV around the side of his own spawn, or where his spawn used to be, then he might very well be able to get that guy into a side where I'm not looking, and he's going to spawn in all sorts of stuff. I do not want that to happen. There, yeah, Leopard moving forward, but at this point, he pretty much goes GG, and he surrenders. So he was definitely trying to get his unit back in there, but he couldn't. And I win. Very, very fast game. Now, because I'm doing my commentary directly after the match, I can still show you what killed what, and also quickly go over the replay, because otherwise this would be a very quick video. The Tiger spotted and eliminated the UH-60 with the seals inside and also was able to kill one recoilless rifle truck, just one. Aside from that, it's all manner of transports, thanks to the KM-900, sorry, thanks to the amx 10 rcs eliminated. Um, Legionnaires were able to kill off the reinforcements, that's really the only things that they were able to kill, because they just did not get an opportunity to kill anything else. Leopard 2A1s were very busy and productive. 48A5K, KFE90, and you can just see all sorts of 106 M40s. And I'm saying this reminds me of Blitz War because I have been watching Blitz War and his motorized and mechanized series, and he uses a tactic like this where he just spams a whole wave 
of 106s. And it tends to work, or at least the videos that we see, in, in those cases it definitely works. Um, in this case it did not work th so well. Let's see how he started. I wonder what he had. There. He puts his command there, a fob in the middle, there we go. Yeah, it's all manner of 106s. Backed up by a KM900 for spotting, recoilless rifle infantry, more KM900-263, and basically the same thing here. Copy of that push. Left flank, one UH-60. It's more of an afterthought. I mean, if he can land there, great. Otherwise, meh. And this very much confirms my suspicion that he had nothing here. In which case, um, again, as an afterthought, it'd probably be safer to put the CV not there, but there. Because once I realize that you have nothing there, then I will come for you down this road, meaning that I encountered the CV earlier if it's over here than if it would be over there. He stops. Why does he stop? Maybe he hasn't spotted the majority of my forces yet. And he too might be wondering, where is he? But I'd say the moment that you see a tiger, you should be aware that there is something happening there. Or rather, it's not a rule. There could be something happening there. These guys are going to get very quickly eliminated by the KFV as well as the 106s. These things have uh, not a lot of accuracy, but they're dirt cheap at 10 points. So you can just use them in, in wave tactics, and when you do that, it will work. And in the meanwhile, the KAFV-90 will actually accurately shoot something, but not while on the move. They don't have a stabilizer. Look at this. These guys stood no chance. But interestingly, he kind of just moves past it. And the VAB? And the VAB 2013? Does he even know that they're there? No, he doesn't. <laughs> he does not know. Oh, beautiful. There's his command. So it was indeed in the K511. Kind of as expected. There is his command gone. Legionnaires moving forward. And now I'm just hunting him down. That OH6 has no rocket pods, no machine guns, nothing. I... Well... He either had to bring something back, which with a deck like this is doable. Generally, Blue Dragons, or is it just South Korea? It's just South Korea. South Korea and Japan notably have problems with autonomy. Um, this time around, not so much because there are such light vehicles. And then the Leopards just go to town. He keeps swarming forward, finding my command vehicle. So again, my command should have been back there. Would have allowed me to buy some more units. Although, I'm wondering what I could have bought in my Eurocore deck that would have stopped these. Because it is 12 AP, and that means that they will always do some sort of damage, since it's heat. Um, they do three high explosive, and they fire seven rounds a minute. And it is... Currently a bunch of three, four of them. So that's a lot of firepower. So infantry probably wouldn't even have been the best option either. Um, they would have cut clean through a martyr. So other than the AMX 10 RCs and the 1390s that I threw at them, I'm not sure exactly what I could have used. What other units would have been helpful? Let me know down below in the comments. What do you think I should have used? What would have been useful? There lands the command vehicle. At this point, I'm not sure why he would immediately surrender. Because, arguably, he could have brought his command vehicle to my spawn. And then we just would have traded spawns. He didn't lose that much more than I did. So I think he could have won this. But maybe because his push didn't work, he decided to surrender. Anyway, that was a really quick game. 7 minutes, 25 seconds, job done. And that was how I won against a uh, second lieutenant. Which, for the moment, is my uh, highest scored kill. Or highest scored win. So, on to bigger and better things now. Hope you guys enjoyed the journey. Uh, I feel like I am slowly but steadily getting better at the game. I hope you can uh, appreciate that. 
and let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you soon.